Welcome back to Sailing Moxie. I'm Matt. As I'm working to refit my Hunter 54 from a distance for a few more weeks, I'm relying entirely on the pictures and video clips that I'm receiving from my family members in Florida and from the various professionals working on the boat. As I've poured over these photos for the last few months, I've found that Moxie has some interesting components and amenities. Every sailboat is different, of course, and there are pros and cons to everything, but I'd like to share a few things about my Hunter 54 that I find interesting. One of the most noticeable aspects of Moxie from afar is her stern sugar scoop and swim step that opens up to a large internal dinghy locker. Many sailboats store their dinghy on the foredeck while on longer passages or on davits at the stern, but some larger monohulls incorporate dinghy storage within the hull itself. Hunter 54s are one such boat with space to afford this. Of course this means giving up internal space that could otherwise be used for storage or living space, but it's one aspect of this boat that I like. The compartment is watertight and looks to angle into port to give more room on the starboard side for the quarter berth. The dinghy locker opens upward by hinges and can fit a decent sized rigid hull inflatable dinghy. Plus the rear swim area looks to be quite functional. In all reality, the Hunter 54's rear end is one of the reasons I bought this boat. In a previous video, I mentioned the A-frame that is used to support the mast and the compression loads from the rigging. This means the mast does not run down through the cabin to the keel, which leaves the cabin more open. This is something I like about the boat. I also want to mention that the stainless steel tie rods attached to this point near the bottom of the A-frame and then lead diagonally both fore and aft up to the deck where they connect to the chain plates for the shrouds. This area looks to be one of the strongest points in Moxie's hull structure and is just a foot or two forward of the keel. Above the deck there are two interesting parts in the same area. One is the fixed solar panel that can be used to maintain the charge on the batteries, and the other are the two ventilation cowls just ahead of the panel. The ventilation cowls swivel and can be turned to maximize airflow. It looks like this setup creates a derayed box that allows for air to flow into the cabin while keeping water or spray out by letting any water that enters the cowls run out to the side of this area. The solar panel also looks to be slightly raised to allow air to flow from the vents under it and keep heat from reaching the cabin directly since solar panels can get quite hot in the sun. The sail configuration has two head sails up front, making Moxie a cutter. It may be harder to manage a boat that has two head sails, even when using just one, but they're both roller furling, so they're easy to stow. This should provide some versatility in sail choices while underway, given the range of wind and sailing conditions. There is a rear-facing chart table and nav station on the port side. I'd prefer to have one facing forward, so I'm going to look to redesign this space to see how I can improve it. Just to the side of the chart table is the electrical panel. The large box there at the bottom is the inverter. Out in the cockpit is the control panel for the autopilot. I have no idea if this system still works, so it's something I may have to replace upon my return. An autopilot is key for long passages, or even longer day trips. Back down in the galley is a three-burner gimbaled stove. The unit sits on pivot points near the top that allow it to sway several degrees to negate the movement of the hull while at anchor or underway. This allows you to cook your food without having it spill all over the place. This unit looks to be in working order, but it's still something I might upgrade. It runs on propane. The propane tank hooks into a compartment up in the cockpit under one of the aft seats. Just to the right of the stove are two refrigeration compartments, one being a freezer. These open at the top to keep the cold air in instead of letting all the cold air spill out like a normal front-facing fridge or freezer. Up toward the bow of the boat is the large V-berth area with its own head. The open center area can be connected by a board and the large mattresses can be placed here to form the main sleeping cabin. There is also lots of storage space in these side compartments under the seats. At the starboard aft section of the boat is another sleeping area, the quarter berth, that is filled with cushions and other items in this pre-purchase photo. Back up near the bow on the exterior, this looks to be a perfect place to add a bow thruster at some point in the future. But at a total cost of about 5 to 10 grand for either an internal or external bow thruster for a boat of this size, including installation costs, it's something I'm going to hold off on for now to see if I feel I need one down the road. Just in front of the cockpit is a wide windshield. This, of course, blocks wind and spray by itself. 
but it also allows for the soft dodger to snap in for protection from the wind, sun, and sea spray. Then, above the cockpit, the bimini top connects to protect the entire cockpit area. Below this windshield, going forward, the running rigging runs from the cockpit under the deck several feet and emerges way up near the mast. This keeps all the lines from resting on the deck and helps keep them in order. There are several winches around the cockpit area and to the left and right of the companionway on top of the cabin. All of these are self-tailing winches which help make sailing a little easier. If they weren't self-tailing, I would have replaced all of them with self-tailing winches during the refit. Down under the hull is the Max Prop automatic feathering propeller, which is intended to keep drag low while under sail. Here you can see it is fairly low profile when feathered. And from the side, you can see the cutlass bearing, the prop shaft, and the sacrificial zinc anodes along the prop shaft. Lastly, something I've bought for the boat but I'm waiting for my return to add are several stainless steel flush retractable deck cleats. I'm looking to replace some of the current cleats with these where feasible to reduce tangled lines and stub toes. Overall, this Hunter 54 looks like it will be a pretty good boat to refit and sail on. I'm very happy with my purchase. To follow along with the work being performed in preparation for Moxie's return to the water, be sure to click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. For Sailing Moxie, I'm Matt, and we'll see you next time.